Vector projections are another use of scalar products of vectors. They're a little bit more involved than simply calculating vectors, but they're a lot more useful as well. Clearly, a vector like 3i plus 2j is comprised of a horizontal bit, 3i, and a vertical bit, 2j. These components, horizontal and vertical, are specific examples of what are called orthogonal projections of a vector. The horizontal component is the orthogonal projection in the i direction, and the vertical component, similarly, is the orthogonal projection in the j direction. Sometimes we'll be interested in orthogonal projections in other directions, for example in tangential directions to motion, and maybe normal directions to motion. Let's think of an example here. We know that the force due to gravity points in towards the centre of the Earth, holding us to the ground basically. What if we were on an incline, rather than just on flat ground? And we're not parallel to the force of gravity. Some of the gravitational force would be holding us onto the incline, while some of it would be pushing us down the slope. An orthogonal projection can split the g-force, g equal to minus 9.8j, into two parts, such as one along a slope and into a slope. The way to do this is to use the formula in the box here, the orthogonal projection. The orthogonal projection of a vector x in the direction of some other vector, v, for example, down a slope or perpendicularly into a slope, is given by the projection of x onto v, which is x dotted with v divided by the magnitude of v, and then multiplied by the vector in the direction of v, v divided by its own magnitude. Or if you want to plug that all together, x dot v over the magnitude of v squared times the v vector. One way of thinking of this is kind of like thinking the amount of x that's working in the v direction. Let's look at a specific example. We want to find the projection of g equal to minus 9.8j onto the vector b equal to 9i minus 6j. Over on the left here, we've got some pictures which roughly show us what g would look like pointing straight down, and a b vector looking like this pointing to the bottom right sort of vector. And we want to find this red one, the bit of g that's moving in the b direction. We're going to do that using the projection formula. So give yourself a minute or two to have a go at this one yourself, and then come back and check and see if you've got it right. First up, we need to make sure that we've made the right letters put into the right places. In the formula, we were using x's and v's. x is the vector we're projecting, and v is what we're projecting onto. So here, g is what we're projecting, and we're projecting it onto b. So b plays the biggest role in the formula. Now it's just a matter of calculating all of these values. First up, there is no i component in g, so the first part of g dotted with b will be 0. Then we have minus 9.8 times minus 6, which gives us 58.8. We need to divide that by the magnitude of b, which is the square root of the sum of the squares of the coefficients. 9 squared is 81, and 6 squared is 36, so we have 117. We have the same quantity again underneath b, and the b vector itself on the top here, 9i minus 6j. The square root of 117 multiplied by itself is going to give us 117 on the bottom, 58.8 on top, and then the b vector again. So we can clean this up just by multiplying through. Plugging that into the calculator, we get approximately 4.5i, take away 3j. Having a look at the red vector over here, the projection onto b of the vector g, it looks like it's about right, positive and then down in the j direction. So that's it for this vec uh, video on vector projections. If you're looking at other text, the usual thing, check out the sections on the scalar or dot product and see if there's any extension into the projection of vectors. Make sure you're attempting the exercises and getting any help with those ones that you can't do or you're having trouble with.